My name is Gassia Mikaelian. I'm an anchor and reporter at KTVU Fox 2 News serving the San Francisco Bay Area. Let's talk more about coronavirus testing and contact tracing with Dr. Melissa Marks, assistant professor in the Department of International Health at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Dr. Marks, thank you for being with me. My pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Let's talk about the importance of contact tracing and maybe let's start at the very beginning. What exactly is contact tracing? Contact tracing is a way to reduce transmission of COVID and frankly, lots of different infectious diseases from people who have it to people they come in co close contact with it by telling those people who are close contacts that they need to quarantine. And that means to, to avoid contact with other people so they avoid spreading the disease to them. I know here in and it, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, and it's an important part of our strategy for COVID response, in addition to the other prongs of our strategies, which are the physical distancing and the personal prevention measures, such as uh, coughing into your sleeve, wearing a mask, and washing hands. Contact tracing can really keep us from having those people who may not know they're infected yet. Um, keep them from actually contacting other people who may get the infection from them. Here in California, we've heard our governor talk about the increased need for people to work as contact tracers. Your university is helping to make that happen. Let's talk about training ordinary people to become contact tracers. First of all, do they have to have any sort of medical background? No, uh, the course that's been developed is appropriate for people without a public health background, without a medical background. You do need some education and you need to uh, have both empathy and the ability to understand the material because you'll be answering questions that are brought up by patients you're talking to and contacts you're talking to. And it's important that you're able to provide accurate information and guidance and link to supports that are crucial for folks who are suffering with COVID and their contacts who may have been exposed. So the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health is offering up contact tracing through free online courses. Is this an hour? Is it two weeks? Tell me about the time commitment. Yeah, it's about five and a half hours of content and it's broken up into different modules and it includes both PowerPoint slides and someone reading the slides to you and uh, it includes some mock interviews that you watch to see how to react to certain questions and to imagine what it's like to talk to somebody who either is newly infected and you're guiding them, or it, you might be telling for the first time that they might have been exposed, which if you can imagine, that can be quite sensitive and scary for people. Yeah, that goes back to the empathy you mentioned that hopefully someone would have. Um, when I think about contact tracing, you know, if I rewind my life three months ago, I'll tell you, I was at the grocery store, I was in the newsroom, I was at my son's elementary school, I visited my parents. I mean, I couldn't count the number of places I've been these days. I'm at home, working from home, and I go to the grocery store maybe every seven or eight days. Would, would the, you know, are the questions to the people, what time were you at the grocery store? What part of the grocery store you were in? Give me an idea of some of the questions these contact tracers will be asking of the public. Well, in this time of social and physical distancing, we do know that people are, a lot of people are having fewer contacts, but some people continue to go to work and continue to have to be exposed, uh, even partly because they might live in close quarters with other folks. Um, so uh, the contact tracers actually do ask, they, they think about the period that that person might have been infectious, they go back to that period, and first they ask about household contacts, and because those are the people who spend the most time with a case and are most likely to have had substantial exposure to him or her. So those are the most, we think that those are the most important people to keep from having contact with other people. And then we go back to that period and we go day by day and ask people where they went, who they had contact with, and we're looking for close contact. We're not looking for uh, a, a walk around the neighborhood. We're looking for uh, a, a situation where they may have been within six feet of someone. 
we're looking for the opportunity to um, see contact that is for about 15 minutes or more, not just a you know one second of, of contact with someone. So yes, it, it certainly uh, would be more challenging if we weren't in the social or, or physical distancing time period. And in fact, contact tracing does happen in outside of the contact of the uh, context of social distancing uh, for TB, HIV, STDs, and and other things like even Ebola. Right. Right. I, I know I've heard that some um, experts are saying that contact tracing is one of the keys to essentially boxing in the spread of COVID-19. Um, with better contact tracing, what changes do you think we might see in society? Here in California, we're just now beginning to enter phase two, which means you know some retail establishments can open for curbside pickup. Restaurants don't do dine-in service yet. So you know the, this easing of restrictions is something everyone is looking forward to. How might contact tracing help with that? Well, we are hoping, you know, some of the criteria for getting to this reopening is supposed to be a reduction in cases over time. So we're looking for uh, contact tracing to play a role as community transmission comes down to identify and block community transmission of people who are newly infected and can newly infect their contacts. So we do think that it's a, there's an important role for contact tracing in the reopening and getting back to work and getting back to a more normal life kind of scenario. Um, and we think it's important, it's really important because COVID can be transmitted before you have symptoms to talk to those cases immediately upon diagnosis or even if possible just when they say they have compatible symptoms and then call their contacts and ask their contacts to quarantine then if we can reduce the time that people are possibly infecting other people during that infectious period even when they're asymptomatic, then I think we'll be able to get a hold of this disease. And we're gonna be able to squash the, the chain or stop the chain of infection before it gets out of control. How problematic is it that some people who have COVID-19 have symptoms? Others, I think I've read as many as maybe 44% of people who have it are asymptomatic. So, you know, when people ask me, have you been in contact with someone who has coronavirus? I say, I don't know. That's right, and, and we will not be able to do contact tracing for people that are asymptomatic. What we will be able to do is do contact tracing for people who test positive. So if someone's asymptomatic and for some reason they get a test, we could do contact tracing with them. And, but if we never know that person's infectious, then we don't know to contact their contacts. So uh, that's why testing is an important precursor to doing good contact tracing and why I think around the country people have been requesting, I, shall I say, demanding uh, more capacity in testing. And we, we agree with that. What sort of response are you seeing uh, to this offer of free online courses to be a contact tracer? Tens of thousands of people in the past, uh, in the past three or four days have signed up for this course. Um, and this course provides a, a basic overview of the principles of contact tracing um, and basically why do we do it, how we do it, the six steps for doing contact tracing, and then how to do it well. It does not replace what a health department would need to do to get someone who was hired as a contact tr tracer up to speed on the particular social or cultural issues of those areas or even the epidemic issues of that those areas. And it does not teach them how to operationally do contact tracing you know, with the software and the, and the phone calling protocols of each health department. So people who take this course need to then move towards uh, get hired at a health department and then get trained by the health department to work there. Well, I, I certainly know California is looking for volunteers. I, you know, I have to say a lot of people are looking for ways to help. Um, we've talked about giving blood. We've talked about, you know, checking on your elderly neighbors. So this is, it's a really good, strong way to feel like you're doing something productive because of course you are. Finally, Dr. Marks, uh, how can people access the free online courses? Coursera.com.
They just have to, you can either search Coursera, C-O-U-R-S-E-R-A, or you can try to type in Coursera.com. It's a free course. You look for the contact tracing course and anybody can take it. I, we talked to somebody this week whose mom wanted to take it. And it's not just for people who want, who need and work, want to work in contact tracing. Some of the content can be useful for people to just understand what it is. And I'm grateful that, uh, that society is finally understanding what local public health folks do. And I think it will help us all if people are not fearful of a call from the government because they understand what contact tracing is. So anybody who wants to take a, the course should take it. Anybody who wants to volunteer or get a paid job at a health department should take it and let the health department know that they've already taken this course. It'd be a great help to their community and the country. Dr. Melissa Marks, Assistant Professor in the Department of International Health at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Thank you so much for your time today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Of course, and more information on this topic and others is available anytime over at coronavirusnow.com.